Peace, 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 peace. What's good? What's good? What's good? This is your boy Suleiman. I am here live with y'all, Rob Ben Nazareth and Rabbi Lewis. So when you come in the building, hit the like button. Hit that like button when you come in the building. I'm not just saying that just to say it. Hit the like button when you come in the building. This is the Solar Vision Debate League. Tonight, they will be discussing a very, very interesting topic. When Jesus return, will he be a Shiite Muslim? This is the topic that they came up with. Sometimes I come up with topics. Sometimes they create their own topic. This is the topic that they came up with. This is their creation. So we're going to see how this thing goes down just to let you guys know we will be rocking out as usual because this is what we do on in solar vision debate league it's pretty much what we do right so tomorrow the 25th we will have off but we will be back on the 26th yashar will be debating brendan bay the topic aboriginals or israelites which would be better politically for black people that'll be 12 p.m noon so we we will be rocking out 12 p.m noon on the 26th i believe that that is a saturday so make sure you be in the building for that family um on the 27th we're going to have anonymous hebrew going up against daniel Al, and the topic for that debate will be is there salvation for the Gentiles? That'll be 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On the 28th, we got to finalize this, but it'll be Israel Doctrine. Hopefully going up against Radical. The topic, Common Sense and Virtues or the Bible. Which would be better for black people, right? Um, on the 29th, we're going to have Asar MK. He will be squaring off against Young Israel. The topic... Was the Ten Commandments plagiarized from the laws of Ma'at? That'll be 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you begin the builder for that. On the 30th, we're going to have True Justice going up against T-Duck, which is a better tool for black men to succeed, Prince Hall, Freemasonry, or the Bible. That'll be 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, we got a whole litany uh, of debates lined up for the family. So, this is where you want to be. If you are about that debate life. Alright, so we have a debate that has been scheduled, I believe. Um where's that Judah Nazareth debate? I know I scheduled that Judah Nazareth debate. Yeah, Judah Nazareth has a debate with um T Duck. Um, I believe that will be on the 6th. Yes, that will be on the 6th, I believe. Let me make sure of that. But I don't see it, I don't, I don't see it up here, but it will be up there. Um, so we got a whole litany of debates lined up for the family. So once again, this is where you want to be if you're about that debate life. Alright, so with that being said, once again, the topic for tonight's debate is When Jesus Returns Will he be a Shiite Muslim? So let's introduce tonight's debaters. What's going on, Rabbi Lewis? Islam, Islam, Islam. My name is Rabbi Lewis, a.k.a. Louis Islam. Islam. All right. And we got Yah Rob Ben Nazareth in the building. Shout out to you, Solo. Uh, shout out to Solo Division the Great League. All praise to the Most High God of Israel. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to my ancestors. Uh, shout out to Yeshua Hamashiach, our Lord and Savior. Shout out to your Howard War Machine, tanks on the ground. Um, man, let's get it in, man. Let's uh, let's put this one in the books, man. All right. Peace all right. to the chat. All right. So um, for the topic for tonight's debate, um, we have a um, standard format. That would be a five-minute opening, a ten-minute premise. A 10 minute rebuttal. We're going to get into the rapid interrogation and then a five minute closing. Um, 
Yah Rob Ben Nazareth is set to go out first. So we're going to go ahead and set the timer for five minutes. And Yah Rob Ben Nazareth, whenever you're ready, you can begin your opening. All right. So can you share the screen for me, man? Can you get that up? All right. Flat. I'm gonna start with my premise. Uh, so uh, we're gonna be really dealing with this. Uh, with, uh, Jesus uh, or Isa is uh, he's referred to in Islam uh, when he returned as a Shiite Muslim. This is very important when he returned as a Shiite Muslim. Uh, second slide for me, Sola. All right. So I'm gonna be bringing out this premise tonight, people, um, and it's very important that we really pay attention to this because. It really goes into what the actual title of the debate is about, right? We're just not talking about uh, Islam, right? We're talking about a specific belief uh, that is held in most Islamic beliefs, and we're talking about the Shiite or the Shia, uh, Shia law or Sharia law and how they deal with in their understanding of the Hadith and how they refers to Christ's return, I believe. My opponent uh, is, uh, he follows uh, the Sharia law. So we're going to really get into that. Uh, I did ask him, uh, in setting up this debate, was he a Shiite? And I believe his answer was yes. So we're going to really get into that because it goes to the understanding of the premise of this debate. So again, according to biblical eschatology and the consensus, the consensus of Shiite Muslims, that's very important, according to the Hadith, also very important jesus will not and cannot return as a shihite muslim okay i'm going to restate that again my premise for this debate along with the title of the debate according to biblical eschatology and the consensus of shihite muslims according to the hadith jesus will not and cannot return as a shihite muslim next slide for me solo please all right biblical eschatology right this verse here revelations 19 this chapter this is going to really set our premise this is going to substantiate that right my premise that jesus will not be able to return as a shiite muslim it's not going to happen so let's see this here revelations 19 the writer bears the name known only to himself this is refer reference to christ's second coming his return revelations 19 the writer bears the name known only to himself that's revelations 19 and 12 but he is called the word of god revelations 19 and 13 and upon his garment and upon his thigh is written the name what is this name king of kings and lord of lords 19 and 16. in order for my opponent to even establish this premise for this debate that Jesus will return as a Shiite Muslim, he's going to have to rewrite what we know about Jesus. He's going to have to rewrite the entire Bible, right? He's going to have to rewrite the Quran. I'm going to get into that. He's going to have to completely dismantle what we know about Islam itself in order for him to even make this argument valid that he will return, that Christ will return as a Shihai Muslim. So again, let me re uh, reiterate Revelations 19. The writer bears a name. This is referring to tr Christ. Only to him, known only to himself, Revelations 19 and 12. But he is called the word of God, Revelations 19 and 13. And upon his garment and upon his thigh is written the name King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is very important. If, if you really understand biblical eschatology, if you really understand uh, Sharia law, if you really understand the consensus of the Shiite Muslim faith or belief, 
you'll know right away that this verse right here pretty much ends this debate. This understanding of who Christ is and his second coming and his return, this verse, Revelations 19, pretty much ends the debate. Next slide for me, soul, please, sir. All right. Let's get into biblical eschatology on the second coming. Matthew 24 and 36. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the son, but the father only. Hebrews 9 and 28. So Christ, having been offered one to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time. Not to deal with sin. Listen to that, people. Hebrews 9 and 28. He will appear a second time. Not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. 1 Corinthians 15 and 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. All right? And if you understand biblical Hebrew in an idiom, uh, in the twinkling of an eye, that's a specific period of time. That's the time before uh, the day, before midnight turns, uh, before nighttime turns to day. It's that sliver of time, right, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. Matthew 25 and 13. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. So let me go back to Hebrews 9 and 28. It says, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin. Do you understand that, people? This is very important, understanding biblical eschatology, right? So when he talks about Christ's second coming, right? I'm going to show you some things later on coming up in this debate. How Christ cannot return as a Shiite Muslim. Time. All right. All right. Shout out to God, Rob Ben Nazareth. We're going to keep this thing rocking and rolling as always. So we're going to um, pass the ball over to Rabbi Lewis. Rabbi Lewis, you have five minutes for your opening, brother, whenever you're ready. Okay, Islam again. My name is Rabbi Lewis, aka Louis Islam. Islam to the audience, Islam to the family. Uh, I'm a published author, I'm an initiated rabbi, an historian, and stock investor, a millionaire mentor. You can check my work at Amazon.com, just type in Rabbi Lewis. And um, you can find a link to my newest book in the description box below for, for clear proof of the African origin of the Jew. In this book, you're going to learn about the unequivocal proof of the African origin of the Jew. In fact, even Tacitus said that the Jews of Europe was of Ethiopian origin, not quote Tacitus. So you're going to learn about the African origin of the Jew, and you're going to introduce it to civics. And other in a couple other topics in this book. All right. So to pull pull it up on the screen. I just sent you an email. So to pull it up on the screen for me, please. That's okay. Um. All right. I just sent it, brother. It should it should come. It should have came through already. Uh, are you talking about your book? No, I just sent you an email about two minutes ago. Before um. Yeah. Okay, I see it. Um. All right, um, let me share the screen. All right, brother, uh, they can see. Hold on a second. Hold on, gotta pull up on YouTube. Okay, yeah, it came up. Okay, so this is kind of blurry, but oh, I see that. go ahead. Uh, that should be cool right there. All right, uh, whenever you're ready, bro. Okay, a lot of people don't know because they not they don't study. They don't know that reincarnation, the concept of reincarnation, exists in Islam. Most people think it's just life, death, and the resurrection, the Yomu Kiyama, which means the day of resurrection. But that's not true. There's, the Shiite Muslims uh, in antiquity always held on to the concept of reincarnation. They call it Thomas Souk in Arabic. I read this. So this is an article from encyclopedia.com on reincarnation in Islam, right? So it says, uh, let me see, still pulling up? Yep. It's called Tana Souk in Arabic. It's, and it's the Islamic word for rebirth of souls. Although it would apparently contradict the orthodox scripture of the afterlife, it was nevertheless held by, to be true by some Shia sects, right? 
So there was a lot of. I'm a Shia Muslim, by the way. And the Sheikh uh, Sassil Abi, Wadi Law, and who? May Allah be pleased with him. So in, in Shia Muslim, Islam, there's always been there's always been a, a a precedence for reincarnation, you know. And if you were wicked, if you were wicked, you were said to be reborn a Sunni, Jew, or Christian. If you were a kafir, kafirs are just they would be reborn as an animal. So there is a constant reincarnation in Shia Shia Islam, unlike the the, the Sunni sects. What's the difference for those who are wondering? I'll be quick. So there's something called the Oasis of Fadak. You know, when uh, Muhammad died, Asali was selling Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. His daughter Fatima married uh, Ali, uh, Rani Um Ali was the one who started the Shia sect. They were married. Fatima was Muhammad's daughter. He had over seven children. And um, in a nutshell, um, uh, Abu Bakr, uh, but not a lot. Abu Bakr said, you know, he didn't he didn't feel that. Uh, a prophet of God should own property. So so Abu Bakr told Fatima that he, she was going to give the property to the public, just leave it to the public. So Fatima, Muhammad's daughter, so they were selling and, and Abu and Ali, who started to see a sec, said, okay, this is this is not right. This is we own this is our land. This is our this is owed to us because I, that was her father. Fatima was Muhammad was Fatima's father. So Fatima felt like, okay, this property belongs to me. You know, so that's how the whole sect to see a seemingly split, split happened over the oasis of Fadak. Uh, Muhammad had conquered the oasis of Fadak when after Muhammad died, um, Abu Bakr took the land from Fatima and Ali and gave it to the public, to the Sahaba, the companions. You know, that's how the split started. That's actually how the, the split started. That's that's the uh, yeah, believe it or not, over the oasis of Fadak. You know, again, Abu Bakr felt like that Muhammad should have owned land, so Fatima, his daughter, felt like that land belonged to them. You know, so that's how this, the whole Sunni and Shia split started in the first place. I can go further, but I think that's the opening statement. And I'll say one more thing. Uh, I'll yield. I'll yield for now. Hopefully that was at a fine. I'll yield for now. Hopefully, hopefully this should be good, good debate. All right. Uh, shout out to Rabbi Lewis. Um, we're going to go now into the premise round, which is um, set for 10 minutes. Let me go ahead and set this timer up. Real quick, um, for ten minutes, and we can swing this thing over to uh, y'all, Robin Nazareth. Y'all, Robin Nazareth. You have ten minutes to break your information down. Whenever you're ready, you can begin. All right, Sola, can you share the screen for me, sir? All right. Make a quick work of this tonight, family. Now, be ready, brother. You can be. Hold on a second. Let me share the screen. Forgot to share screen. Yeah, I can't see it. I can see. All right, we should be good now. Yeah, let's start right there again. I just want to reiterate a few things because I want to pay, want us to pay attention to Hebrews uh, nine and twenty eight. Right. So again, so Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly uh, eagerly waiting for Him. Now again, the title of this debate, people, is when Christ comes. We're talking about His second coming. When Christ returns, will he return as a Shiite Muslim? Right. And so we see already that our brother in, in his uh, opening that he also talks about in his information, if you were reading or, or just happened to have time to follow along, that he also mentions the imam here. And in my opening, you saw my title page. Right. And on the title page, it talks about the 12th imam. Right. And we're going to talk about that. Right. So let's go to the next slide. So look. we're going to talk about how Christ uh, will not turn as a Shiite Muslim. Right. So again, listen to this. This is biblical eschatology on the second coming, because this is the debate we're talking about. Right. And we're going to see how this contrasts to the Shiite uh, belief or the uh, 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 according to the Shia belief or understanding or Christ's second coming as well. So Luke 21, 25 through 28. 
and there will be signs and, uh, and there will be signs uh, in sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken and then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory now when these things began to take place straighten up raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near next slide for me solar we're talking about the second coming right now here people this is very important right this is also very important we're going to be talking about right here it's called the seal of the last prophet right so this is pretty much going to seal this debate right and so we're going to talk about this go to the next slide for me solo thank you right so the seal of the last prophet and what it talks about is uh muhammad peace be upon him to all my uh islamic brothers out there peace be upon Muhammad. The last prophet, right? The Quran claims that Muhammad is the seal of the last of the prophets. Let me read that again. The Quran claims that Muhammad is the seal or the last of the prophets. Muhammad is not the father of any man among you, but he is the messenger of God or Allah. And the last or the end of the prophets. And God is, or Allah is never all aware of everything, right? All right, so... In Surah 33 and 40, uh, Hilal Khan, this has been widely understood to mean that there will be no more prophets after Muhammad. We understand this, right? There will be no more prophets after Muhammad. Regarding the above text, uh, a commentary attributed to Muhammad's first cousin uh, and renowned Muslim scholar, Abin Abba says, Muhammad is not the father of any man among you. I Zaid, but he is the messenger of Allah. But Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. With him, Allah has sealed the event of prophets, such that there is no prophet after him. And Allah is aware of all things, of your words and works. Tabar uh by men, tabar abbas. Right? Let's go to the next side, Sola. Muhammad will be the last is the last prophet. Now listen, this is very important. The hadith reports have Muhammad claiming to be the final prophet. Narrated Abu Hurairah, the prophet said, "The Israel, the uh, the Israelis used to be ruled and guided by the prophets. Whenever a prophet died, another would take over his place. There will be no prophet after me, but there will be caliphs who will increase in number." The people asked, oh, Allah's apostle, what do you order us to do? He said, obey the one who will be given the pledge of allegiance first. Fulfill their or the, uh, uh, caliph's rights. For Allah will ask them about any shortcoming in ruling those Allah has put under their guardianship. Uh, Sahar al-Bukhari, volume 4, book 56, number 661. We're talking about Muhammad being the last prophet, right? according to the Quran, as well as according to the Hadith. Next slide for me, Solo. Um, Al-Jalani says in reference to, uh, to Surah 33 and 40, that Muhammad is not the father of any man among you. He is not Zayid, biological father, and so it is not unlawful for him to marry his former wife Zayid after him, but he is the messenger of God and the seal of the prophets. And so he will not have a son that is a fully grown man to be a prophet after him. A variant reading for Katim al Nabiya has uh, Katim al Abiya as in the instrument known as the seal. In other words, their prophethood has been sealed by him. Who? By Muhammad. And God has knowledge of all things among these in the fact that there will be no, there will be no prophet after him. And even when the Lord Jesus descends at the end of days, he will rule according to his who? Muhammad's law. Tefasel Jahani, this is the source, right? So let's go to the next slide. Remember, Muhammad is claim they claim Muhammad will be the last prophet, right? So this somehow is supposed to explain away the fact that Jesus is a prophet who comes after Muhammad. Now understand what I'm saying here, people, is that you have in the Quran and in the hadiths, they all they claim that. 
the seal of the prophet or Muhammad, he will be the last prophet to come. But when you get into Sharia law and you get into the hadith of the commentary, which my opponent is going to be bringing out tonight, he's going to have, he's going to show this contradiction here. Because what he's going to attempt to show you is that Christ or Jesus is supposed to come back as a prophet to Israel and to the Christians and to the Muslims. He's going to show you that. But clearly we see here, if Muhammad is supposed to be the last prophet, then how is Jesus supposed to come back as a prophet? There's a contradiction there. So he's going to have to clean that up for us tonight in order for us to, in order for him to prove that Christ will be coming back as a Shiite Muslim. If he can't clean up this contradiction here, this debate is over. Because there's no way it can happen according to the Quran and according to the Hadith. He's not going to be able to do it. Right? Uh, so let's go forward. Uh, yeah, Allah's Apostle said, I have five names. I am Muhammad and Hamad. I am Al Mahi, to whom Allah will eliminate infidelity. I am Al Ashir, who will be the first to be resurrected. The people being resurrected thereafter, and I am also again. Uh, I, there will be no prophet after me. According to Sahih Abakat, Volume 4, Book 56, Number 732. Next slide. But the Quran and the Hadith contradict this claim, since these sources say that Jesus is returning to the earth in the end of the days. So if Jesus is supposed to be coming back as a prophet to judge Israel and to judge the Christians and to judge the Muslims to show them, right, that he's been wrong the whole time and that they should follow uh, uh, the, the ways of the uh, 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 of Muhammad's law, then there's a contradiction here. How is he coming back as a prophet if Muhammad is the last prophet? Right? But the Quran and the deep contradict the claim since these sources say that Jesus is returning to the earth in the end of days. And because of their saying in both, we killed Messiah Isa, or Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of God. But they killed him not, nor crucified him, but the resemblance of Isa, Jesus, was put forth, and so, again, uh, was put forth uh, over another man, and they killed that man. And those who defer therein are full of doubt. They have no certain knowledge. They follow nothing but conjecture. Next slide for me, so I think I got a few seconds left. For surely they killed him not, Isa, Jesus, son of Miriam, but God raised him up from with his body and soul unto himself. He is in the heavens, and God is ever all powerful, all wise, and there is none of the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, but must believe in him. Isa, son of Miriam, and son of Mary, is only a messenger of God and a human being. Before Isa or a Jew or a Christian death, at the time of appearance, the angel of death. And on the day of resurrection, he, Jesus, will be a witness against them. So they say Jesus is going to be a witness against the Christians. Right? So that would make him again a prophet. But clearly we see there's a contradiction. If he's going to tell you that the 12th Imam, which you're going to hear my opponent, has to say, the 12th Imam, who's actually going to come back along with Christ during the second coming, that Christ is going to be this prophet to the Christians to get them on the straight and narrow to follow Muhammad's law, then he's going to completely go against the Quran itself. Hi. All right, shout out to God, Rob Ben Nazareth. Uh, we're going to pass this thing now over to Rabbi Lewis. You have also 10 minutes to drop your information, brother, whenever you're ready. You can begin. Yeah, definitely. Somebody to meet your mic. We got bad feedback in the chat, bro. So that's okay. So we don't get any bad feedback. Can you guys hear me? Okay, great. All right. Again, my name is Rabbi Lewis. First thing, for, I wrote a book called "Is God a Homosexual," which is one of the most controversial books. It's got homosexual counts, crazy church records. If you read that book, which is available for twenty bucks on Amazon, um, you'll find out the truth about Jesus and Nazareth. Uh, a late uh, lay was selling. He 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 had a wife and children. Jesus had multiple wives and he had multiple children. In fact, he was married to Mary Magdalene. You know, Mary Magdalene was in the biblical narrative. 
So Jesus actually married Mary Magdalene and had children. Yeah. So my book is kind of homosexual. You're gonna get the details on that, on that history of how Jesus had a wife, wives, multiple wives and multiple children. And um and actually he was the son of uh, Emperor Tiberius, who was the illegitimate uh adopted son of Caesar Augustus. So actually the real historical Jesus was the son of Emperor Tiberius, and his mother was Mary, which was the granddaughter of King Herod. So Jesus' father was a was a uh, a Roman emperor. And his mother was the, the granddaughter of King Herod, who was the Edomite king over Israel. He well, he was the the he was under Caesar. You know, the, the Romans appointed him king over Jerusalem or legate. Sir, you know, the legate. I guess you could for lack of better words. So you can find information in my book. It's got a homosexual counts, and church records to learn about uh, the origins of Jesus, the obscure origins of Jesus, and uh, the fact that he had a wife, wives and children. You know. You know, you hear about stuff like this in like the Da Vinci Code and books like the, you know, like Da Vinci Code, you know, which has truth to it. All right. So there was a book um, called The Gospel of Barnabas. If you heard my lectures before, you probably heard me talk about The Gospel of Barnabas. When well, The Gospel of Barnabas, uh, which is a book they took out of the Council of Nicaea, you know, there was a lot of books they took out of the Council of Nicaea to fit the, the, the you know, to fit the narrative that they wanted to, to set the tempo for the narrative that they, the picture they wanted to paint for Christianity. They took a lot of books out, right? Um, one of the books they took out was called The Gospel of Barnabas. In The Gospel of Barnabas, Jesus prophesied the coming of Muhammad. You know, the disciples asked Jesus, they asked him, Jesus, Rabbi Jesus, Jesus, if you're not the Messiah, he, he said, are you the Messiah? And then Jesus said, I'm not the Messiah. And the disciples asked him, and I quote, he, they said, well, if you're not the Messiah, one second. So then the disciples said, if you're not the Messiah, who is the Messiah? And then uh, Jesus said, Rabbi Jesus responded and he said, uh, his blessed name would be Muhammad. So they were selling peace upon him. So Jesus and the gospel of Barnabas prophesied the coming of a man named Muhammad, who would be Muhammad, who would uh, be the, the Messiah, not him, not Jesus. Jesus is not the Messiah. The Muhammad will come after him and be, be the Messiah, right? So let's check it before we even get started. But I can elaborate a little bit more, I guess. And people said that uh, Barnabas is an Islamic forgery. There was the, um, what's his name? George Sal. He was Orientalist. An or Orientalist is like someone who translates stuff from other languages. He said that, and I quote, the, the Gospel of Barnabas was not an Islamic forgery. And and George George Sal was the one who translated the Quran into English. The, 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 the Qurans we have today, the Holy Qurans we have today. He said that the Barnabas was not a uh, Islamic forgery. Okay. All right. I see a lot more. So I don't know what Yara stands his his you know his 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 premise his, his stance on the, the virgin birth. But I, I have so much to say. I have so much information to share again. I've written you know okay, um, you know Jesus called uh, Emmanuel in the in the in the Matthew narrative. You know, you know we know Emmanuel that uh, Isaiah had three sons. He had a son named Emmanuel. So G, so. Isaiah had a literal son named Emmanuel, which was his second son, you know. But the New Testament quotes Isaiah to try to make Jesus Emmanuel, you know. But I can say more, so I, but I'll stop there. I don't know what his position is on the virgin birth, so I'm not going to put any words in his mouth. I can say a lot more, but I'm going to stop there. Hopefully that. All right, shout out to Rabbi Lewis. We're going to keep this thing rocking. Um... We're going to pass this thing back over to Yah Robin Nazareth. It is time for your rebuttal, brother. Um, we're going to set the timer once again for 10 minutes. And Yah Robin Nazareth is on you, brother. Whenever you're ready, you can begin your rebuttal. All right. All right, Sola. Can you, can you share my screen for me, family? All right. Um, to be honest with you, I don't. I don't even really know what I should be rebutting right now. Um, but share my screen from the brother. Um, so again, I don't. Uh, I don't know what the virgin birth has to do with the topic of the debate. So I will not be addressing that. Is part of the rebuttal. Um, I don't, uh, uh, I do have some other questions what the brother said, but I'll bring that up in the, uh, uh, 
interrogation or rapid fire round, whichever one it is. Okay, um, let's go. Let's 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 go to the next slide. So let me see what that is. Right. Okay. Let me read this. Right. Shiite Muslims. All right. Um, among the nearly 68 million people in Iran, the vast majority practice Sharia law and are Shiite Muslim who place their hope not in modern day politics or rulers, but in a person who walked the earth centuries ago and is promised to return. Both Islam and Christianity have a very well defined eschatology or period of the last days. Both of them cannot be correct, uh, said William Wagner. Senior Professor of Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary and the author of the book, How Islam Plans to Change the World. Next slide for me, Solo. All right. Uh, what is Shia or Sharia law? The heart of Islam, which means submission to Allah, is based upon the Quran. Uh, Sharia is the religious law forming part of the Islamic tradition. It is derived from the religious precepts of Islam, particularly the Quran and the Hadith. In Arabic, the term Sharia refers to God's immutable, which means unchangeable divine law, and is contrasted with fiqh. I've been uh, practicing that word, which refers to its human scholarly interpretations, right? Human scholarly interpretations. The manner of its application in modern times has been a subject of dispute between Muslim traditionalists and reformists. Next slide for me, so. Uh, they think their law is from God. Sharia law is not from is not God's law according to the biblical understanding. Even though some of it may be based upon the Bible, I want you to understand that the Sharia law is not divine. It is man-made rules and regulations of strict adherence to the Quran and Hadiths. We would call this legalism, right? So it's very important to this debate. When you're talking about the Shiite Muslim, uh, that they follow pretty much the tenets of Sharia law. I don't think my opponent would disagree with that. If he does, uh, he will be one of the very few people in the entire world who claims to be a Shia or a Shiite Muslim that doesn't follow or support uh, Sharia law. Um, and if he's looking for Christ to return as a Shiite, then he should be under the impression or under the belief his premise should be that he will that Christ, when he does return in the second coming, that he will be following or she should be enforcing Sharia law. Right. Uh, next slide for me, Sola. Let me get through this really quickly. Uh, Yeshua on women's rights. We're talking about or Jesus on women's rights. We're talking about Sharia law. We're going to get into that a little bit. Next slide for me, Sola. Uh, let's see here. Jesus Christ lived 2000 years ago in today's Israel. His perspective toward women ran entirely against the Middle Eastern culture then and now. Women were often treated as property. Uh, Jewish uh, rabbis, uh, like my opponent, uh, began every temple meeting with the words, Blessed art thou, O Lord, for thou hast not made me a woman. Right? A wife could never divorce her husband. However, a husband could divorce his wife for any reason. He had no obligation to financially care for her. The husband simply handed her a bill of divorce, and she was sent her way. Women are often viewed as inferior to men, excluded from public religious life, and rarely taught the Torah, even in private. Next slide for me, Solo. Right. Uh, let me read this. Uh, he healed and performed miracles as readily for women as for men. He taught both men and women. It didn't matter what their religious credentials were or their social standing or their lifestyle. He loved people and interacted with them in a very welcoming way. Men and women are alike. This includes thieves, prostitutes, lepers, women of low social class. Author Philip Yancey comments for women and other oppressed people. Jesus turned upside down the accepted wisdom of his day. According to biblical scholar Walter Wink, Jesus violated uh, the, mores of his, the mores of his time in every single encounter with women recorded in the four Gospels. Uh, you can read that in Philip Yancey. Jesus, I never knew. Page 154, Zonovan Publishing House. Um, you can also read these verses. Uh, John 8 and 4 through 11, John 4 and 13 and 14. Next slide for me, Sola. Let me get through this pretty quickly. Uh, next slide. I think my one more. Next slide down. Next slide down. Uh, uh, you think it froze? Oh, it is moving now. Go to uh, 23. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, Shiite, uh, Sharia law in depth. So if, if my opponent is claiming Christ is coming back as a Shiite, he should be following Shia law in his second coming, right? And so these are the practices that he should expect Christ to be keeping, right? This Shiite Sharia law in depth on women's rights is very important. Let's go to the next slide real quick. Let's talk about some things that we see with women in Sharia law. Women in Saudi Arabia. Sharia or the Islamic law, the basis of women's right. Women, despite their age by law, must have a male guardian. Women must ask permission from their guardian to get uh, uh, to get married, uh, divorced, to receive education, to travel, or even open in a bank account. The Human Rights Watch describes women as being the same status as a child. Girls can't get married to a man. Uh, girls can get married to a man when she's just 10 years old. Women wear a veil or negate in a head covering, uh, a hajib. Go down to the next slide, Sola. These are the things he's claiming that Christ is going to be enforcing when he comes back during the second coming. Islam Sharia's law is cast in words Muhammad called Hadith. His actions called Sunnah in the Quran, which he uh, dictated. The Sharia law itself cannot be altered, but its interpretation. It cannot be altered, people. So if Christ is coming back and he's going to be a Shiite, he's going to be bringing God's law, which they believe that this is the word of God. Sharia's law here is the word of God that Christ will have to enforce this Sharia law. Let's go to the next slide, Sola. We'll go now. So the first thing. So in Sharia law, in Shia, I believe these are some of the things that my opponent is claiming Christ is going to have to enforce. Uh, theft is punishable by amputation of the hands. Quran 5 and 38. Criticizing and denying any part of the Quran is punishable by death. Criticizing Muhammad or denying that he is a prophet is punishable by death. Criticizing the denying Allah is punishable by death. Uh, a Muslim who becomes a non-Muslim is punishable by death. A non-Muslim who leads a Muslim away is punishable by death. A non-Muslim man who marries a Muslim woman, a non-Muslim man who marries a Muslim woman is punishable by death. Go down to the next slide for me, Solo. I'm just going to keep going through some of these. I got so many of them here. Um, a woman or girl who alleges rape without producing four male witnesses is guilty of adultery. A woman or girl found guilty of adultery is punishable by death. A male convicted of rape can have the conviction dismissed by marrying his victim. Muslim men have sexual rights to any woman girl not wearing the hijab. Or hajib. So, in other words, if you're not wearing your hijab, I'm sorry, then you have a right to rape that woman. This is a part of Sharia law that my opponent has to say that Christ is going to be enforcing when he comes back on the second coming. If you find a woman that's not wearing a hijab, you can rape her. Next slide for me, Solomon. Right. So listen to this. In a landmark 2010 pro Sharia ruling on S uh, SD versus MJR, Judge Joseph Charles Jr. of New Jersey concluded that the Muslim ex-husband repeatedly had raped, right, or see Taharusha, right, his Muslim ex-wife. After testimony from the Muslim man Imam, the, the judge denied the ex-wife request for a permanent restraining order against her husband, citing the Muslim's man belief. So you even see here in some American courts here in New Jersey that the Sharia law was upheld because why? This man's Imam said, you know what? It's okay for this man to rape, repeatedly rape his ex-wife. This is what my opponent has to say that Christ will be enforcing these same laws if he's going to return in the second coming or the second event, event as a Shiite Muslim. Next slide for me, Solon. Right? Next slide. More things that are more things we went through before. Uh yeah, let's go to that article right there. One below it. Right. Sharia law and female genital mutilation. Right. Formerly of uh, uh, also known as FGM, a Michigan state lawmaker uh, 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 justified introducing an anti -Shia, uh, Sharia bill in 2017 by citing a recent case of female genital mutilation. A practice scholars, uh, uh, a practice scholars and anti FGM uh, activist say is um, is not tied to Islamic law. State Representative Michelle uh, Hortingia, uh, uh, what it says, emailed the entire Michigan State House in an effort to get a co-sponsor for the bill 
4499, which would ban residents from using foreign laws, including Sharia law in state courts. So you see the title that's from the Huffington Post, uh, 2017. Lawmaker says female genital mutilation cases, reason to vote anti-Sharia bill. Next slide for me, Sola. Sharia law and female genital mutilization. Well, mutilation. Where does female mutilization come from? Right? So listen, it began here in uh, the topic of much discussion uh, among anthropologists and historians and the exact origin of F, uh, FGM remains questionable. It is clear that FGM existed before Islam and Christianity since there have been Egyptian mummies discovered that date back to the 5th century BCE that were uh, genita uh, genitally mutilated. This is also confirmed by a Greek papyrus in the British Museum that is dated 163 BC. Uh, next slide for me, Sola. My opponent is going to have to agree with the Sharia law on this female genital mutilization. He's going to have to say Christ is going to actually be enforcing this, right? When he thought this is his second event. It is theorized that the practice began around the western shore of the Red Sea and spread along the slave trade routes to the southern and western African regions. It was reported in 1609 that a Somali group had a custom of sewing up their female slaves to prevent conception and increase their price uh, value of slaves to the purchaser it is also reported in 1799 egyptians employed circumcision uh and infibulation uh, among other terms for mutilization for pregnancy and female slaves so this female mutilization is part of sharia law that shiite muslims mostly follow and if christ is going to be coming back as a shiite muslim then he's going to have to enforce this according to uh, according to my opponent's uh, uh, understanding of being a Shia Muslim itself and following Shia law. Next slide for me, Sola. Look at the things that they're doing here. Now, listen how listen to this, right? Strabo, 64 BCE to 23 CE, wrote about uh, female gender mutilization after visiting Egypt around 25 BCE as the Philo of Alexandria. The Egyptians, by the custom of the uh, country, circumcised uh, the marriageable youth and maid in the 14th year of their age and when the male begins to get uh and when the male begins to get seed and the female is to have a menstrual flow and you can read this in the source uh mary knight uh june uh, published june 2001 uh um curing cut of a ritual mutilization and you can see what the tools that they even use these today you see the razor blade there uh, a little alcohol swab pad and right there you see the little uh, uh like a little file there don't even ask me so let's go to the next slide here. All right. Shout out to y'all, Rabbi Nazareth. We're going to hand this thing over now to Rabbi Lewis. Rabbi Lewis, you now have 10 minutes for your rebuttal. Brother, whenever you're ready, you can begin. <laughs> Okay, now, now, now. I'm also the eight-year uh, my name is Rabbi Lewis again. I'm also an eight-year Arabic uh, student and teacher. Want to learn Arabic as a second language? Uh, you can check my book out. It's on Amazon. It's free if you have Kindle Unlimited. It's in the Kindle App Store. Uh, it's free if you have Kindle Unlimited. It's called uh, Learn Arabic as a Second Language. I wrote a book on Arabic. Well, you know, the basis of Arabic for people who want to learn Arabic as a second language. I'm an eight-year Arabic student and Arabic teacher. All right. So if you read my book, it's got a homosexual college creeds and church records, which is available for $20 on Amazon. You'll find out that not only did Jesus have uh, wives and children, he had multiple wives and multiple children. Not only was he the king of Britain, he also had a twin brother, you know. And this can be confirmed by the Gospel of Thomas. There was a young kid who came up to Jesus and said, uh, you know, uh, Judas, you know, uh, Jesus' brother was named Judas. Judas. His name was Judas, right? So there was a young kid who came up to Jesus and said, yo, yo, Judas, Judas, what's up, man? And then Jesus said, I'm not Judas, I'm, G I'm his twin brother, Jesus, right? So Jesus, according to the Gospel of Thomas, had a twin brother named Judas. That was his twin brother. They, they were identical twins. You know what I mean? Uh, this can be confirmed by the Gospel of Thomas. You can find this, these sources in my book. It's got a homosexual counsel, the sources in the book. All right. So Jesus had a twin brother. And uh, this is why in, in the in the Quranic narrative, um, the first thing Jesus is going to do is take the cross and break it to signify he never died on the cross. That's pagan. That's why it's called crucifixion. It's fiction. It's crucifixion. 
The person who died on the cross was actually Jesus' twin brother, Judas. Judas. Judas got crucified. The Romans crucified the wrong twin. They thought it was Jesus when they crucified Ju Judas. So in a nutshell, the, the, the Romans, you know, under uh, Pontius Pilate, they crucified Ju Jesus' twin, Judas. They thought it was Jesus because they had, they looked the same. And it was, and once they realized they crucified the twin brother, not Jesus, Jesus fled and they went to Britain. Him, Mary Magdalene, uh, Joseph Arimathea, the one who took, you know, in, in the biblical narrative, who took, you know, Jesus off the cross and put him in the tomb. They all went to uh, Britain. And this is, this is recorded, this is recorded history. Uh, I think it's in Tacitus' work, the, Anno, the Annals of Time. I think it's called, it's in my book, the source is in my book, Got Homosexual. Uh, they started a church in, um, they, they started a church. Um, the presence, the, the, Mary Magdalene went to Europe, uh, to Britain, just my dear. This is recorded history, recorded fact. Um, you can find this in uh, Josephus's work, I believe, as well. All right. So we run into this all kind of issues with the biblical narrative. You know, like the three days, like Jesus said he'd be in the tomb for three days and three nights. That's bogus. He was only in the tomb for two nights and one day. He, he got put on the cross in the biblical narrative on Friday night. They took him off Friday night. He was resurrected on Sunday morning. That's two nights in one day, not three nights in three days. That's checkmate. And f furthermore, biblical narrative got it wrong. That was Jesus' twin brother who died on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, Rabbi Jesus of Nazareth, peace be upon him. He actually was the king of Britain. He was still alive in 31 AD. He, he, he was the king of Britain. He married Mary Magdalene, who was a British queen. She, they were related. They were cousins or whatever. Jesus uh, married into the, uh, the the Mary Magdalene's bloodline and had multiple children. In fact, Jesus' son, Jesus Rabbi Jesus' son, married uh, into the Claudian line. Claudius was the one who expelled the Jews from Rome. Claudius had children who married into the line, the, the line, Jesus' bloodline. You can find all this information in my book. It's got homosexual for the for the proof of this, for this stuff. A lot of information to cover. So again, Claudius, who hated the Jews, he expelled the Jews from Rome, Claudius, um, Emperor Claudius. He uh, he hated Jewish people, but he ended up making the truth with, with the Jews by marrying into the, to Jesus' bloodline. He had a son with Mary Magdalene, you know. Yeah, so I could say a lot more. What else What else I got to say? Hold on. Let me think. <laughs> I had a lot to say. Um, Yeah, the, 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 you know, one more, I'll say one more thing. I can say a lot more, but I'll stop there. Hopefully that was edifying. All right, all right. Shout out to Rabbi Lewis. Um, it is now time for the rap and interrogation round. We already know um, uh, how this whole thing goes. We give each debater 10 minutes to um, interrogate the other debater. So... Without further so, ado, rapid interrogation. Rapid interrogation. We're going to start out with Rabbi Lewis. Rabbi Lewis, you have 10 minutes to interrogate Yah Rabbi Nazareth whenever you're ready. Okay. Oh my God. What was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Um, yeah. Uh, Yara, how you doing, brother? Islam. Shalom. What's shalom? Shalom, family. Islam, Islam. Shalom. Well, uh, can you name uh, some dear sons off the top of your head? You said what? Can you name the prophet Isaiah's sons off the top of your head? Uh, you name his son named Emmanuel. That's what we get to. Yeah, can you name his other sons? Uh, not at the moment. Okay, do you believe in the virgin birth? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, checkmate. We do know. Um, hey, um, it's a little scratchy on somebody's end. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's mine. Probably. Yeah. Hold on, let's my headphones. Yeah. There you go. All right. Okay. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, sweet. All right. So, you believe in the virgin birth? Well, you do know that the Emmanuel was was Isaiah's wife's second son. So for this to be a twofold work in prophecy, Isaiah, Emmanuel would have to have been her first son. Because the, the narrative says that, behold, a, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son named Emmanuel, right? Did it say that? Yes. 
So a virgin suck a seed and bring forth a son of Emmanuel, right? So if that's literal virgin, not a young woman, but a, a actual virgin, that doesn't make sense because Emmanuel was Isaiah's wife's second son. But this would be a two-fold work in prophecy. That would have to have been her first son. Are you aware of that? No. So that, it's for people confused. Isaiah had three sons, Sheyashub, Emmanuel, and Malata Pahashba, right? Emmanuel was her was Isaiah's wife's second son. The biblical narrative in the, Matthew says that a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son named Emmanuel. So, so this is a two-fold prophecy, right? Well, can you spell Emmanuel's name? E M M A N U E L. So, Mary, excuse me, Isaiah's wife had a son, had three sons. One of her sons was Emmanuel. Emmanuel was her second son. For this to be a two-fold work in prophecy, Emmanuel would have had to been her first son for a virgin, for a literal virgin to conceive and send him Emmanuel. Are you following me? Can you spell the first son's name? She Yashu. which means in Hebrew means a remnant shall return. It's, it was just these were this was a message for King Ahaz. Ahaz was the king of Judah, Israel. Uh Hashem, God. So you're saying that those names actually were signs until Israel. This was signs for King Ahaz, correct. During the time of Isaiah, but, but did you, okay, so did, go ahead. So Isaiah was told to name his sons those names as a sign to Israel, correct? Yeah, Malat okay. Hashba was his third son, which means uh, God is with you, I believe. Malat Hashba. So for this to be a two-fold work of prophecy to fit Jesus into this narrative, Manuel would have had to have been Isaiah's wife, first son, not second son. Aware of that? No. Why is that? Because if that was her second son. That means that she couldn't have been a literal virgin because she had a son before that. If if this is your second son, that means you had sexual intercourse before you had your if when you had before you had your second son. You had a son before that. Are you aware of that? You who, understand? who who had the second son? Brother, Isaiah had three sons. She she mm -hmm. Emmanuel, Elasa Bahashba. For mm -hmm. this to be a literal virgin, a virgin shall literally conceive. Not a young woman, but a, not a young man, but an actual virgin. That would have many would have to have been Isaiah's first son, not second son, to make this a two four prophecy. Why? Because if Mary was a literal virgin when she not a young but a literal virgin when she had Christ, that this would be a two four working prophecy. Isaiah's wife would have had to also have to have been her first son, not second son. It doesn't it doesn't add up. Am I making sense? You follow me? When when was his birthday? Whose birthday? Emmanuel's. Which one? Emmanuel? Is that his son or, or Jesus? Either one. I don't think that's pertinent. I'll move on because I don't. I don't think you understand. So I, I'll we'll move on from that because again, this this to be a two four. Thank you. For this to be a two four in prophecy, um, Emmanuel would have to have been Isaiah's wife first son, not second son, for her to be a little virgin. Because you can't be a virgin if that's your second. So that means you had a son before that, the second son. Your okay. first. Son. Does it make sense? Okay. Anyway, all right. Let me ask you, what day was Jesus crucified on the cross? Let me ask you that. What day he was crucified on the cross? Yeah. I don't know. You don't know. Okay, but you're messianic, right? Yes. But you don't know. You, okay, why, why don't you know? Can you explain that for the people? For the family? I don't know. I don't know. Can you elaborate on that for the people? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, if you go to Luke, I'll help him out. If you go to Luke chapter, let me get that for the people, for the family. I'm a rabbi. Luke chapter 20. I think it's Luke 23 and 54. Hold on. Let me get that in the, in the New Living Translation. I think it said. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is Luke chapter. Go to Luke chapter 23, verse 54. In the New Living Translation, it'll tell you. And it says, this was done late on Friday afternoon. The day of preparation as the Sabbath was about to begin. So Jesus was taken off the cross on Friday afternoon. Okay? You can find it in Luke the third, 23rd chapter. Are you aware mm -hmm. of that? Yes. So Luke 23 actually gives you the actual day. It was a Friday afternoon. But the, but the King James just says it was the day of preparation, which could have been mm -hmm. any, right? No. Okay, go ahead. Want to respond to that? No. No. Okay, last question. Uh, well, last question. Are you aware of... You, do you know what Exodus 6 and 3 says? No, tell me, please. I'll read. I'm in the New Living Translation again. I don't deal with the King James. It says, I okay. appeared, this is, this is Hashem speaking, God, right? It says, I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, but I did not reveal my name Yahweh to them, right? Could you explain what that means? Mm -hmm. He did not reveal his name Yahweh to them. Okay, do you do know, according to the, um, you familiar with the last one, Kadash, the 
the one west uh you call that uh vernac one west um rendition of hebrew somewhat yeah well according to the laws last one kadash um l is pronounced allah you would literally pronounce l as allah you know but what you know and this is why Zephaniah said that he would turn us to a pure language. And they, that was fulfilled by the Lashon Kodash, right? Zephaniah says Hashem will turn us to a pure language, which they say is the Lashon Kodash. So what am I getting at? Uh, Exodus 6.3 says we didn't, that Yahweh was not, the word, the name Yahweh was not revealed to the Israelites during the time of Abraham, but they called on the name Allah. So actually, Abraham didn't even know Yahweh. He didn't even know that name Yahweh. He called on Allah. Allah, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beware of Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You aware that, that Abraham didn't know the name Yahweh, that he called on Allah, that his God was Allah, not Yahweh? Uh, I disagree with that. You, can you, uh, before we close out, um, before I'm done, my time's almost over, can you, can you elaborate on that? Well, Genesis 18, verses 1 through 3, he refers to Yahweh. Who, who, so who's speaking there? Abraham. Abraham refers to Yahweh. Exodus yeah. 6 and 3 says he didn't know the name Yahweh. Can you explain that? Can you reconcile that? Are oh, you getting some feedback, yes, brother? <laughs> he didn't know. Cool. Hello? Repeat that verse again. Exodus 6 and 3. Can we go? Because they got two more minutes, I think. You said Matthew 6 and Exodus, 3. Exodus, Shemot, Shemot 6 and 3. Also known as Exodus 6 and 3. It says what now? Shemot, Exodus 6 and 3. It says, I repeat. Yeah. Go ahead. Read that. You got a minute. No. What, what, are you, what are you asking me? Okay. Are you aware that Abraham didn't know the name Yahweh? He only knew the name Allah. Allah, the Arabic God. You wear that? Did he? Do well, if he only knew the name Allah, why didn't he use Allah in Genesis? You mean, you mean Yahweh, right? No, you said he only knew the name Allah. Correct. Why didn't he use the name Allah in Genesis? Because Abraham did write that. That was written by Moses. He hundreds of years after Abraham died. Abraham didn't write none of that. Oh, that was God. all written by Moses. He that was all revealed to. So Moses. if it was all written by Moses, so how what makes you think he wouldn't have known? Brother, 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 what his brother, name was brother, hold on, hold on. In Exodus, hold on. Let me let me respond to that. Genesis fourteen says Abraham went to Dan, right? Dan uh -huh. didn't exist yet. You know that, right? When Abraham was alive, there was no Dan. Dan came hundreds of years after Abraham. It says Abraham went to Dan. That's well, you what you what you reading there, brother, is an anachronism, right? You're looking at what the writer is referring to that particular parcel of land as he's writing. It, that's anachronistic. Yes, writing. correct. Hold on. It's, it's anachronistic. Yeah, so when it says he's, you know, when you're talking about Dan in that instance, he's he's correct. It's not a contradiction if that's what you're getting at. Oh, and it's a contradiction. I agree. It's not. But it, there was okay. no Dan on the time of Abraham. I mean, Dan didn't exist yet. Again, that's what did you know. Do you understand what I just said to you? Yeah. You, yeah. Okay. Last point. Last question. Do, um... Why did uh, Amram, Moses' father, marry his his uh, his aunt, which is against Torah law? Prove that it was his aunt. That was his aunt. Amram married his aunt. He married his aunt on his father's side. The law says in Leviticus. I eight, said prove that it was his aunt. What 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 do you what what source what basis are you re taking that information? Right now, hold on. I know my time's almost up. Time all right, all right. So, uh, six, by the way, Exodus six and twenty. Okay. All right, so we're gonna hand this thing over to Yahweh Ben Nazareth. You have ten minutes to interrogate Rabbi Lewis whenever you're ready. Okay, Rabbi Lewis. Um, you stated earlier, I believe, in your premise um, or your opening that Christ or Jesus, as we know who he is today, um, was a Roman. His father was a Tiberian, it was Tiberius, so he was a Roman soldier. Correct. Yes, yeah, he was the emperor, son of Tiberius, correct. Okay, so that would make him a Roman, right? By blood. Yeah, Tiberius was uh, the illegitimate son in, of... Uh, right, okay. So can you tell me then, uh, when did 
uh, Christ, the Roman, as you claim, when did he convert to Judaism? Right. He was his mother was um, a descendant of he was a mother. He was Israel on his mom's side. Um, his mother was the, the, the granddaughter of Herod. You know, King Herod was right. Yes, he was an Edomite. Herod had a granddaughter named Mary. That's the same Mary from the biblical narrative. But, okay. but Mary's Mary's mother was a Israelite. She was a, she was from uh, Samaria, so she she was okay. like half Israel, half Edomite. So he was an Israelite. Okay. As well. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, okay, great. Um, so now that we established that he was a Roman, right? Can you show me uh, in the Quran or the Hadiths uh, where this Roman prophet was entrusted with the word of Allah? Yeah, sure. The you see this a lot in history. Um, the biblical narrative is a, the biblical Jesus is a conflation of two stories: Jesus and his twin brother. It's, you see this a lot in history where two stories become one story. This, the biblical scribes took Jesus' brother narrative and Jesus' narrative and make it one narrative to confuse people on purpose. You can see this in history a lot. It happened like Saint Patrick from Saint, you know, Saint okay, Patrick. Okay, great. So, so if you're saying what you're saying is is that Jesus, right, um, was not the one prophesied to um, be the prophet of Israel? No, the, the, the narrative is a conflation of Jesus' twin brother and Jesus. Is was he supposed to be, is, was Jesus the prophet Say it again, brother. of Israel? Say it again. Was he the prophet of Israel? Was he a prophet? He, no, no, he was no, he was a he was a rabbi. He was a rabbi. He was a rabbi. Yeah, he not was a, a prophet. He was a prince and a rabbi. Right? He was a prince and a rabbi. Became so you you believe in the twelfth imam? Yeah, he was. Um, go ahead. Sorry. So if you believe in the twelfth imam, then it's this rabbi. It's Rabbi Yeshua, right? Even though Christ says in the book of Matthew, "Call no man rabbi," right? Does he say that? Yeah, that, that's the, that's a forgery. That's that's a uh, interpolation. It's a forgery from who? Who forged it? Uh, what was the name of the guy? Um, I lost the train. If you go study uh Simon Altav's work, Rabbi Simon Altav, he retranslated the Old and New Testament. Probably heard of him. He's a rabbi. He's one of my teachers. He shows. Oh, me. he's one of your teachers. Yeah, he's, he's he'll show. So you. when did he do this translation? Yeah, he re he retranslated the Old and New Testament. He has. When did he do this? Say it again. When did he do this? Oh, this been I actually I own the old and new testament copies. Uh he wrote this years ago, maybe ten years ago. Oh so, so you're talking about you're taking your source from a ten year translation of a rabbi or your your rabbi, right? Yeah, yeah, he, I'm a, yeah, he's my rabbi, yeah. Okay, so that's your source for saying that the New Testament was rewritten and it was a forgery. Yeah, it says don't call me a rabbi, that's that's interpolation. Okay, so that's that was your rabbi's interpretation of the scripture, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so you said you believe in the turn of the twelfth Imam. So according to Hadith, Christ is supposed to return also with his twelfth Imam, correct? Yeah. Okay. Are you aware that the biblical narrative that I read earlier, eschatology, refers to Christ as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? yeah okay does that conflate or is that a contradiction to the belief of him returning with the 12th imam he could not be king of kings and lord of lords no the, the um good question the hadith is clear he will return and uh, he will rule for 30 years then after that he will die and be buried next to muhammad in fact before muhammad died he said you know save this burial place for for jesus and Nazareth when he comes back you know so that's a contradiction to the understanding how that it deeps in the return of the 12th Imam, correct? No, Muhammad said, you know, save this place next to me for Jesus. Because when he comes back, he's going to get buried next to me. Because he's going to come back and rule for 30 years, then he's going to die. And then he'll be buried next to Muhammad. Muhammad he's going to be buried next to Muhammad. So is yeah. Muhammad the last prophet according to the Quran in the Hadith? I would agree with that. Okay, so how is Christ going to return as also a prophet because he's going to be prophesying 
to the Christians, correct? Prophesying to the Christians. According to the Hadith, he will be returning with his 12th Imam to prophesy to the Christians, i.e. the pigs, in order for them to get straight as he raises up the uh, Muslims as well as the Jews, right? Inshallah, yeah. Right. So isn't that not a contradiction? Yes no. or no, losers. No, no. Uh, no, go ahead. Why is that not a contradiction? Uh, if you heard what I said earlier, if you read, if you heard in my, in my, uh, my, my, uh, what do you call it? My, uh, my kutba. <laughs> kutba is Arabic for uh, dissertation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's something called the Gospel of Barnabas, which they took out at the Council of Nicaea. The, you, I think you heard me say that already, right? The Gospel yeah, of Barnabas. What, yeah. I, I'm going to, uh, you mentioned the Gospel of Barnabas, but I want you to get back to my question because the Gospel of Barnabas was never a part of the canonical Gospels because it was written by a Muslim. Can you prove that? You prove that? It was, yes, we can. Go ahead, please. It was please never a that. part of the canonical, canonical Gospels prove that, because please. it was written, First, please. it was written by a Muslim. What was his name? Who wrote it? Uh, I'll get that source for you. Hold on one second, because you mentioned them earlier, right? I'm all ears. I'm, I'm listening. I said George Sal, the Orientalist. He he said that it was not forged by the Muslims. George Sal said Barnabas was not a forgery. He said that. And he he's a he was a, an Orientalist. Well, I didn't say it was a forgery. He's, I never said it was a okay, forgery. Go ahead. I said that a Muslim wrote it. Do you George agree Sal that a Muslim wrote true. it? No, George Sal said that the Muslims did not write it. George Sal that the Muslims did yeah, not George write Sal it. George Sal translated the Quran into English. You know that, right? Who is who is who who is who is George, George Sal? Sal was an academic who translated the Quran from from Arabic into English in the 1700s. So he translated the Quran in, right. in the 1700s. Into Correct. English. His name was George Sal. He said the Guarbas was not tampered. Was George Sal a white? Yeah, man? George was a white guy. He was an Islamic scholar. He was an is an Arabic scholar. Like uh -huh. myself, I've written books on Arabic as well. Yeah. Okay. So did he also translate the understanding of the hadith as well? Uh, I'm not. I'm, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. I know he did translate the Quran in English. He was one of the first translators from the, to the Quran in English from the Arabic. Okay, so why would he say that the Book of Barnabas was a part of the canonical Gospels? Correct. Right, because in the well, in the year two thousand, they found a Bible. The Catholic. But why? Did, but why did he write? Did, did he mention? He never mentioned that it was a part of the canonical Gospels. Right. Well, well, the, the in the year 2000, 19 years ago, 2018. But he never said it was a part of the canonical gospel. Brother, yeah, let me get to that. If that's okay. Um, in the year 2000, the Catholic Church found a, 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 an ancient Bible with Barnabas attached to it in Aramaic. So they found it. They found it a couple, in the, a couple 19 years ago. They found it in Syria. Okay, they found it, but they never said it was a part of the canonical yes, gospel. They did. According to the, according to the Catholic Church, Barnabas uh -huh. taking out of the, of the of the canon at the Council of Nicaea. Do you know it's two books of Barnabas? Which one are you referring to, sir? No, they're, they're talking about the Gospel of Barnabas, not the other one. The Gospel. Right, you're talking about the Gospel of Barnabas. Yeah, d different Barnabas, correct. That's what you're doing, right? So you 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 you're talking about two different books that are completely different. No, they you found, know that, right? Argument is that okay, the Gospel. Of Barnabas, what you just said. The what brother, you just said, listen, brother, brother, hold on, hold on, Lewis, because what you just said is that your brother, George Sal, translated that in the 1700s. You're breaking up, breaking up, brother. Say you breaking up. Say it again. That he translated that book out of Arabic, right? No, no, no. George Sal translated the Quran from Arabic to English, not the Gospel of Barnabas. So the Gospel of Barnabas was originally written in Arabic, though. No, Gospel of Barnabas was written in Aramaic. They found it in the YouTube. They found a Bible that written in Aramaic. Aramaic, not Arabic. So are you talking about the Gospel of Barnabas or the Book of Barnabas? You can't hear me? Hold on one sec. Can you hear me now? Okay. All right, well, shout out to both debaters for their interrogation. We're going to go ahead and close this thing out. We're going to start out with Yara Ben Nazareth. We're going to go ahead and set the timer.
we're gonna go ahead and set the timer for five minutes. Yah ra. Get your sounds together, brother. Um, and whenever you're ready, you can begin your closing. You got five minutes. It's on you, y'all. Right? You got five minutes, brother. Oh, I'm sorry. I was muted. Can you share my screen for me, Solo, real quick? All right. Can you go down for me a few slides? It's going to say, um, let's go down right at that type of page. The next one down. Which one? The next one down. But this? The yep. second coming? Yep. Yep, the second coming. All right, the second coming is 100 shit. All right, uh, next slide for me, so. I'm just going to get into this real quick. Right. Jesus' second coming, uh, Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Then I saw a great right throne, and him who was seated on it from the presence of the earth, and the sky fled away, and no place was found for him. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done and the sea gave up the dead who were in it death and hades gave up the dead who were in them and they were judged each of them according to what they had done then death and hades were thrown into the lake of fire this is the second death the lake of fire if anyone's name was not found written in the book he was thrown into the lake of fire uh next one next slide so Oh, can I do it? All right, next slide. That should be good right there. Um, let's go to the next one. I'm gonna close this thing out real quick. Uh, the next one. Right, breaking the cross. This is where I want to get right, right here. All right, go to the next slide. Let me go real quick. So this prophecy comes from Hadith, uh, or sayings attributed to the Prophet Muhammad, uh, a literature that is regarded to the less uh, definite. Than the Quran, but it's still influential in shaping Islamic doctrine. According to certain hadiths, the apocalypse will come in stages. And the first, the world will be filled with injustice, and Muslims will be oppressed. Then two saviors will arise: the awaited one, or Mahadi, um, a divinely guided caliph who will unite and empower Muslims, followed by, by a bygone prophet who will come back to earth to support the Mahadi and defeat the evil. The prophet will not be Muhammad, as one could have expected. But Jesus praising the Quran as the Messiah and the word of God. Next one. Next slide. Who my opponent said he's going to be coming back as a Shiite Muslim. This slide in Islam seems to suggest that Jesus will return to abolish Christianity and confirm the truth of Islam. A much quote of Hadith says, the son of Mary will soon descend among you as a just ruler. He will break the cross and kill the swine. The usual interpretation of this prophecy is that when Jesus comes back, he will put an end to his own worship, symbolized by the cross, and reestablish the dietary laws that Christianity had abandoned, but Jews and Muslims will observe. Next slide for me, Sola. Uh, the phenomenon of cross destruction goes back to the life and example of Muhammad. A traditional uh, reporter by Al Wahadi said that if ever Muhammad found an objection in his house with a mark on the cross in it, he would destroy it. Next slide for me, Sola, real quick. Let me finish this up. Uh, so the same classic phrase, break the cross, or the Arabic root is KSR or break, which is found in the famous Hadith tradition about Jesus understood in Islam to be a Muslim prophet who will return to the earth uh, as a cross destroying enforcer of Islamic Sharia law. Narrated by Abu Hurra, Allah's apostle said by him in whose hands my soul lives, surely Jesus, the son of Mary, will soon descend amongst you and will judge mankind justly as a just ruler. He will break the cross and kill the pigs um, and there will be no uh, Jesus or no taxation 
uh, taken uh, from non-Muslims because they will be forced to convert to Islam. You can find that in the book of stories of the prophets. Again, if my opponent is saying that Christ is going to return as a Shiite Muslim, we clearly, clearly see here that he's being called a Muslim prophet. Prophet. And I read you earlier that according to the seal of the prophets, that Muhammad is the last prophet to come. So clearly we have a contradiction in what my opponent says he believes in Sharia law and Shia. He said he believes in the return of the 12th Imam or the Mahdi that we read here who's supposed to return Christ, uh, Jesus, uh, to judge the world and to judge the pigs, quote unquote, the Christians. Uh, on the second event, we clearly see this here. But again, there's clearly a contradiction here. So he has yet to address that. not going to be able to address that. So again, uh, thank you, Solon. Shout out to SBDL Live. Thanks on the ground. All right, all right. Shout out to Yara yeah, Robin Nazareth for the closing. We're going to hand this thing back over to Rabbi Lewis. Rabbi Lewis, it is on you, brother. Whenever you're ready, you can begin your closing. Islam, Islam. Again, my name is Rabbi Lewis, a.k.a. Louis Islam. Always an honor uh, to speak to Solar's audience. Uh, inshallah, this was edifying and a learning experience. Um, uh, I want to learn Arabic as a second language. Check my book out. Um, how to learn Arabic as a second language. It's on Amazon. It's free if you have Kindle Unlimited. I want to learn about the stock market from a me, a millionaire mentor, an investor. Uh, just go to click the link below in the description box. It'll take you to one of my newest books. Um, you, can, you learn about the stock market. You know, learn how to not end up like Wayne Huzanga's store, Blockbuster, with one store open. They only got one store open right now, Blockbuster. You know, learn how to not end up like, uh, learn about, you know, the first the first credit card, the whole credit card thing came on the scene in 1951. 1951 was when the first credit card was issued, you know, and it started uh, the whole shopping fad, you know, today, like, you know, the mall shopping fad, you know, with the, with the introduction of the, 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 uh, the uh, credit card in 1951. You're gonna learn about a lot of other stuff as well. You know, uh, you're gonna learn about a bunch of stuff. I read multiple books in the stock market. I'm a stock investor. So again, hopefully this was edifying experience. Uh, thanks to Soul again. Thanks to Brother Yara for participating. Hopefully this is edifying um, uh, Islam. All right, all right, okay. So with that being said, we can go ahead and get to the nitty gritty family. Both debaters lay down their premise, their arguments, and uh, now it's time. For the Shuffle Buck Round family. So, without further ado, here you go. The Shuckle Buck Round is now in session, family. So, who do you want Solar Mind and Shuckle Buck first, family? Let us know in the chat room. One for Yah Robin Nazareth and two for Rabbi Lewis. Who should Solar Mind Shuckle Buck first? It is your time to shine. Let us know who is first up the bat, family. The Shuckle Buck Round is now in session. Who should I Shuckle Buck first? <laughs> One for Rabbi Lewis, two for Yahweh Rabbi Nazareth. The Shuckle Buck Round is now in session, family. This is the Solar Vision Debate League. Yes, family, yes, family, yes, family. So, 
It looks like there's more ones than twos. <laughs> One for Rabbi Lewis and two for Yahweh Ben Nazareth. I think that was what it was, right? Who was what? Yahweh first? I don't know. I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused. Okay, so we'll start out with um we'll start out with Yara. What's going on, Yara? Shout out to you, so what's going on, fam? Alright. So when Jesus returned, will he be a Shiite Muslim? You said what? When Jesus returned, will he be a Shiite Muslim? Uh, no, he will not be a Shiite Muslim or a Sunni Muslim or a green Muslim or a purple Muslim. All right. Um, have you read the book of Barnabas, brother? The book of Barnabas. Yes, I read the book of Barnabas. Uh, and that book is mentioned that uh, talks about the advent of the prophet Muhammad. Yes. Right. So that's clear that that's showing a prophecy that Muhammad will come. Right? Well, yes, it's showing the prophecy that Muhammad will come. Yes. So if Muhammad came, then that will mean that he is a true prophet. If Muhammad came? Yeah, if it was Muhammad prophesied came, in yes, the book of uh, Barnabas that he would come. He eventually came, so that means that Muhammad is a true prophet. You're getting a lot yes. of feedback, brother. Yeah, something wrong. Let me get my headphones. Something wrong with them real quick. Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah, so that would mean that um, if it's prophesied in the book of Barnabas that he would come, then that would mean that he is a true prophet. You're getting a lot of feedback, bro. Uh, what you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You said that would, that would mean that he would be a true prophet, that Muhammad would be a yeah, true prophet. Yeah, since Prophet Muhammad did um, make his advent, and he brought the religion of Islam. So that would mean that, uh, according to the book of Barnabas, Muhammad is a prophet and Islam is a true religion. Yes, Islam is a true religion. All right. So if that's the case, then within the religion, it said that um, Jesus will return as a Muslim. It said Jesus will return as a Muslim. But will he return as a Shiite Muslim is the title of this debate. All right. So the reason why that's important is because so you, do you have concur, different types of Muslims. So you, you do concur that he will return as a Muslim? No, I don't concur that he will return as a Muslim, no. What I do concur is, is that Islam is a true religion. People practice it. It's true. But will Jesus return as a true religion? Because here's the thing, right? Will he return? Will he return? Because here's again, the contradiction is this. Muhammad is supposed to be the last prophet. Muhammad also prophesied that of himself. According to the Quran, he's the last prophet. We read this, this is what's referred to as the seal of the prophets. So if he's the last prophet, then Christ surely can't come back with him as a prophet or after him as a prophet. That's a contradiction. This is the whole premise of my debate. So we can't have it both ways. So whether or not Islam is a true religion is not really the issue here. It's whether or not if Christ returns as a Shiite Muslim, is that possible? My premise is it's not possible that he can even return as a Muslim at all because then he would have to be a prophet after Muhammad. And that clearly contradicts the Quran. It contradicts the Hadith. You only find this premise in commentary, in particular Hadith. Just as Rabbi Lewis pointed out, his his imam that translated whatever he translated 10 years ago, whatever. 
So this is the only time you really find this really clear understanding in these types of instances. So. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Um, we got Robin Nazareth. Um, yes, Rabbi Lewis, what's good? So what's up, brother? Salam. All right. Um, when Jesus returned, will he be a Shiite Muslim? Yeah, because your mic. I can't hear. I can't hear. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, when Jesus return, will he be a Shiite Muslim? Uh, meet your mic. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay, so do you have any evidence proving that? Yeah, the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran says that. So the Holy Quran says that when Jesus come, he will be, a, when Jesus return, he will be a Shiite Muslim. No, but it does say he will return. Um. Okay, so we're trying to figure out where um, you have proof that when Jesus returned, he will be a Shiite Muslim. All right. Well, the Quran is, it tells you not to make sex, not to make sex. So it was never uh, God's intention for the Sunni Shia split. Do, do you know how the Sunni and Shia split happened? I think I explained that earlier. Do you know how? Uh, elaborate. Yeah, so I think I said this earlier, but uh, for people who may have missed it, there's something called the Oasis of Fadak. You familiar with that, Solar? Uh, nope. No. Okay, okay. Well, the Oasis of Fadak, Fatima, and uh, well, I already told the story. You guys go back and listen to that for the story. I digress. Um, so you don't have any evidence suggesting that when he returns, he will be a Shiite Muslim? Well, I mean, it's an argument from silence. It's an appeal to authority. More, more, more for better, better, for better, lack of better words, an appeal to authority. Some set Sunni feel like he's coming back as Sunni. Shia feels like he's coming back as Shia. You know what I mean? And they both have their uh, perspectives. You know what I mean? Respectively speaking. Um. So, do you believe that um, when Muhammad comes back, I mean, when Jesus come back, um. He will be a Muslim, right? Yeah, correct. He will be a Muslim. Um, so, is Muhammad the last prophet? Allah is the, the still the prophet. Yeah, he's, the, he's his final messenger of Allah. Uh, Joe. So, if he's the last prophet, then how would Jesus be coming back? Uh, Muhammad, Jesus, Muhammad's after Jesus. He came after Jesus. Muhammad came in the 600s. Jesus came in the first century. Uh, so is Jesus coming back? Is Jesus coming back? Yeah, he's coming back. Will he be a prophet when he come back? No, he, he's he's coming back to uh, restore peace on earth. Yeah. So he like, will not be a prophet when he come back. Will he be a prophet? Well, that's apple. Uh, this semantics. I think, but, I, but he will. How's that semantics? I'm just asking you. When he come back, will he be a prophet? Will he be a prophet? No, he's not coming back to prophecy. He's coming back to restore peace. He's coming back to do work, to do business, to kick butt. So <laughs> he, he is not a prophet when he come back? No, he's coming back to kick butt. For like, Sorry, excuse my language. Okay, so is Jesus a prophet? Yeah, he was a prophet. He was a, he was a messenger, correct. Okay, so when did he stop being a prophet? In the Gospel of Barnabas, the disciples asked Jesus, are you, are you uh, the Messiah? And then he said, no. Then they asked him, if you're not the Messiah, who's the Messiah? And then Jesus said his name was Muhammad. So that's checking me. So you're saying that Jesus stopped being a prophet when he made that statement? Yeah, he, he said he's not the Messiah, that Muhammad was the Messiah, not him. So you're saying that Jesus no longer was a prophet after he made that statement? No, not prophet, Messiah. They asked him, is he the Messiah, not a prophet? Well, I was asking you about him being a prophet. Yeah, yeah, if you want to use that, a Nabi, like the old Arabic you said, Nabi. Uh, yeah, he, he's a Nabi. Yeah, he, he's certainly a, a messenger of Allah. Yeah, uh, so when did he stop being a Nabi? Well, as I showed earlier, uh, there's an Arab in, uh, Shia, in Shia, uh, Shia, uh, in the Shia narrative. There's something, there's, there's a reincarnation. A lot of people don't know that in Islam there's reincarnation. Did you know that? Nope. Yeah, I just showed it earlier on the screen. It's called Tasanok in Arabic. There's, there's an Arabic concept of reincarnation. All right, so are you going to show me uh, when did Jesus stop being a prophet? Um, yeah, I, I believe that Jesus uh, reincarnated multiple times. I believe he was King Solomon. I believe he was Adam. 
I believe he was um he was Isaac. I believe Jesus had multiple lifetimes where he was played multiple roles. He was King Solomon in the reincarnation. He was Isaac. He was Adam. That's what you know. I believe that he reincarnated multiple times. Um. So I'm still waiting for you to show any evidence suggesting that when he comes back, that he would be a Shiite Muslim. Or you said that he was um. Or can you show me when did he stop being a prophet? Right. Again, he wore multiple hats. He's coming back in all his glory. Um, he used to be, he was King Solomon in the reincarnation. Jesus of Nazareth was King Solomon. He reincarnated. He was Adam. He was Isaac. He had multiple lifetimes. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks a lot, brother. Okay, we could go ahead and uh, get to the voting family. Uh, let us know who you vote for, family. Um, is it Yah Robin Nazareth or is it Rabbi Lewis? The number is 215 954 9091 Call in now or die. This is the Soul Arbitrage Debate League. Um <laughs> It's been a very interesting debate to say the least. Um as what I what we always do here on Soul Arbitrage Debate League. We will keep it rocking and rolling. Um, on the 26th, on the 26th, we're going to have Yashar in the building. He will be going up against Brandon Bay. And the topic will be Aboriginals or Israelites, which will be better politically for black people. We got our first caller, Peace Family. State your name. Who will you vote for? Tango, Elder Yara. All right. The people's vote is now in session, family. People, 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 call in now or forever hold your speech. Who do you vote for? Is it Yah Robin Nazareth or is it Rabbi Lewis? Yah Ra has one people's vote. As what you guys should already know, the people's vote does not determine the outcome of the debate. Peace, peace, peace. State your name. Who you vote for? Yeah, what up? So this is Eddie Thomas. Um... Vote for All right, thanks a lot. Shout out Tango, shout out Eddie, PC family. All right, so um, the people's vote is now in session, family. People, 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 let us know who do you vote for? Is it Yara Ben Nazareth or is it Rabbi Lewis? I've been doing a lot of work today, setting up the baits, and I just, for some reason, something told me to call him, because, you know, it, it was on my spirit. <laughs> it was on my spirit, because sometimes when, you know, I'm, you know, sipping through the debaters, and I'm looking, and I'm trying to see, I said, I'm going to give this brother a call. The brother dropped out the league, and usually I wait a couple of weeks before I give him a call. You know, to explain to them how things is ran here on Solar Vision Debate League. Because this isn't for everybody. Admittedly, I know, me, Solar Mind, that this Debate League isn't for everybody. Right? So, I came across his name. I said, uh, let me call this brother, man. The brother is Prophet Donnell. Call Prophet Donnell. Now, what is about to take place is very crazy. So I want y'all to brace yourself for what's about to take place. You know? I called Prophet Donnell. And so I'm like, you know, explaining to him, like, look, man, you know, the league is uh, very unique, you know? And I'm, I think I, I want to give you some advice, you know? Because he had an issue with the vote. And, you know, he felt this old kind to shortchange him with the vote. And um, so, I said, I'll tell you what, man. I'm going to give you some advice, man. Since you're a Christian, why don't you join the Yahweh War Machine? That way you'll get a little more support. It'll help you out on the peer votes. Da, 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 da.
you know. So before I continue this, we're gonna have to switch to the peer vote. Peers, peers, peers. Call in now or die. This is the Too Long Bitches Debate League. The peers vote is not in effect, family. Peers, members of the Debate League only. Call in now. Who do you vote for? Is it guy Robin Nazareth or is it Rabbi Lewis? Come on in. Hey, look, I'm the only judge for tonight's debate, right? So, my judge is worth four points in the shuckle buck. Yo, it's crazy. There's so much power. Yo. Know? I got the three judges votes and the shuckle buck vote. Yo, I got so much power, son. It's about to go down, son. I got so much power up in here, B. <laughs> but anywho, we got our first caller. He goes by the name of True Justice. True Justice, who do you vote for? I will vote for Yara. Good job. Good job. All right. So we got Shout one out to you. peer Thanks vote on the ground, for. True uh, one peer vote for Yara Ben Nazareth. The peers vote is now in the session, family. I believe we have a text vote in. Uh, we have we have a vote. Um, Swab votes for Yara. Um, Sosa votes for Rabbi Lewis. All right. So the peers vote is now in session. Uh, one vote for Rabbi Lewis. Two votes for. Shout out to you, Swab. Two votes for um, Yara Ben Nazareth. We have another caller. He goes by the name of Orthodox Moore. Orthodox Moore, who do you vote for, brother? And I got to vote for Elder Yara on this one. Tanks on the ground. Brother Rabbi, you already know what time it is, but the Quran don't say that one time that, that Isa al Islam will be a Shia Muslim. It don't say that he'll ever come back <laughs> and uh, stipulate that, that Muhammad was the last to find a messenger because the Quran don't say that. And it definitely don't say that he'll back no prostitution, Mutah marriage, fam. Come on now. Tanks on the ground. All right. Peace, 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 peace. All right. So, um, we have another caller. He goes by the name of Chris Harris. Chris Harris, who do you vote for? Uh, I'm a real vote for Rabbi Lewis on this one, man. He made more sense the entire debate. He made more sense. Thank you. All right. All right. Shout out to uh, Chris Harris. We got Madan Kimet. Madonna Kemet is in the building. Who do you vote for, brother? Shalom, shalom. Good debate. Um, I vote vote for Elder Yara. Thanks on the ground. All right, all right. Thanks on the ground, Madonna. Shout out. Bro. Peace, peace, peace. We got yeah, who can in the building? Yeah, who can in? Who do you vote for? Yeah, let me share something real quick. Hey, uh, shout out to you, Rabbi Lewis, man. You got a lot of heart, brother. And I'm gonna I'm say this. Uh, you should no doubt probably win the Iron Man award in the league. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But my vote go to Yara, you know, saying Shalom, Baruch, Baruch Hashem, Yahweh, shalom. and Yahweh War Machine, Thanks on the ground. that's what's up. All right. Thanks on the ground, family. Shout out to you. Who can All right. Minister Howe, Minister Howe, who do you vote hey. for, brother? Hey, what's good, Sola? I'm going for the Iron Priest, Elder Yara, landslide. All right. Minister Howe, there he is. Yahweh War Machine. Peace, peace, peace. Sister in the pod. Who do you vote for? My vote goes for uh, the Tank Yard Hound, a.k.a. Yara. <laughs> Shut him up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sister the pod. <laughs> you look crazy. Pierce's vote is now in session, family. We have a couple of text votes. K.O.T. votes for Elder Yara. We have another caller. He goes by the name of Shalom, Anonymous G Hebrew. Anonymous Hebrew. Yo, yo, peace, peace. All right, first off, this man said that Jesus was Solomon and Adam. 
Nine votes for Yara. We got another vote from Radical. He votes for Yara. Uh, Asar MK. Asar MK. Peace, peace, peace. Who you vote Shout out for? to Radical. You know, Jesus is a Palestinian. It really wouldn't be unlikely he would come back a Muslim. Rabbi Lewis gets my vote. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm going to send you some of that comedic lotion right, I got you right, for that ashy right. foot. Brendan Bay sends in his vote for Elder Yara. Um, yeah, man. Brandon Bay. Shout out to you, brother. Peace, you man. You know? Uh, ew. Ew. <laughs> Sometimes it goes like that here on Solar Bitches Debate League. You know, everybody's vying for position because the playoffs. It's going to be crazy. You know why the playoffs is going to be crazy? I'm going to let you guys know in a second. But right now, we got Nimrod. Who do you vote for? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, good debate. <laughs> uh, I think Rabbi Lewis uh, made some incredible points, man, about that uh, verse in Isaiah, man. So, uh I didn't understand nothing else that Yara was saying the whole debate. It made no sense to me, so my vote goes to Rabbi Lewis. All right. <laughs> Shout out to the orphan. I, I, oh, wait, wait, wait. All right, so Rabbi Lewis has four votes. Uh, the Yara has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Pair votes. All right, so um, yeah, you know what's funny when put somebody calling, you know who they voting for, they try to play it off like, yeah, it's been an excellent debate, and uh, both people make. <laughs> Just let us know who you're gonna vote for, because y'all some biased motherfuckers on the pair vote. We already know that. We already know that you niggas is biased. <laughs> So anyway, I called Prophet Donnell, and I says to him, Prophet Donnell, I think you should join the Yahweh War Machine because, you know, they all believe in Bible-believing people, and uh, maybe you could get in the mix that'll help you out on the peer vote, because I know these niggas is biased as hell. He says, I ain't joining no fucking Yahweh War Machine. So am I. I'm a motherfucking prophet. And besides, none of them believe in the Trinity. So I said, um, well, I think Minister Howell believes in the Trinity. He said, Minister Howell don't believe in no goddamn Trinity. Call that nigga. But prove to you that he do not believe in the Trinity. So I said, all right, I'll call. I called Mr. Howell. And um, I'm going to tell you now. Right? Y'all know I'm sold of slime, so I recorded the conversation pretty much. <laughs> and um, it got a little crazy after a while because they both believed in the Trinity. It was one of those Christian debates. They both believe in the Trinity, but what exactly the Trinity means to each one, it was kind of like, you know... They both believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, but they believe it to be this, and Miss Howell believe it to be that. So I'm like, okay, uh, you know. But the conversation kind of went left field, and this is very, you know, you know, um, I gotta, I gotta find the right word for that. 
I did not know that the conversation was going to go left field with Christians. And y'all know what I mean when I say left field, right? Y'all know what I mean, right? So, me being so the sly, yeah. I'm going to let y'all, just a little bit. I'm not going to show the whole thing, you know. Minister Howe is in the building, and he's, you know, he knows I'm sort of slime, so, you know. <laughs> I'm going to let y'all in on the part where it gets a little juicy. <laughs> and the rest will be in my book. The link is in the description. <laughs> if you want the full, if you want the full dialogue, hit the link in the description and check it out in my book. So let me go ahead and pull it out, family. I'm, you know, before you know, we get up out of here, cause I'm doing all the judges' votes anyway. So we can wait. We can wait. I know y'all want to hear it anyway. <laughs> cause you know I'm sort of slime, right? Y'all know I'm sort of yeah. Y'all know I'm sort of slime. <laughs> so let me go ahead and pull this thing up real quick. Um. Yeah, man, I'm like, yo, this conversation is kind of going crazy. I'm not going to even tell y'all what was being said in the conversation. I'm just going to let y'all guys hear just a portion of the conversation. Just a portion of the conversation, you know? Because I'm like, yo, what the, what the fuck? Um, the whole story of the question. Now, we're not going to sit here and get on the question. Ask me the question. And I'm going to ask you the question. Listen, ask me the question. I'm the way is still coming with primary evidence. There ain't no game, there ain't no joke. There ain't no joke. What's up, man? What's up? Can we please do a show? It ain't even got to be a debate show. Well, me and Prophet Donnell. Have him on a live screen. Have people that he's directly affected through the office of profit come on the live screen and give their testimony on how uh, 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 and you want to do that? Do you want to do that for now? Because the conversation had not went there. But I can, we man, we listen. I can provide countless people after people after people that God has used me not just to prophesy, but to heal and speak things that come to pass. God has used me in that miracles. Yeah, yeah. Prophet Donnell? Hey. Why you, my man? You can't mess with Minister Howe, man. You keep talking about you in the spirit. Yeah. Minister Howe don't play with it, bro. He 
called you, man. You <laughs> was y'all able to hear him pop it down? Cow, bro. I couldn't even hear him. It was like too staticky. I heard, I, I, I heard, I, I heard him rebuke that homosexual spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It got, it got a little ugly, pretty much. You know, got a little ugly. I'm about yeah. ugly, but you know. Man, but I will say, I will say the reason why, because y'all couldn't really hear because it, it was like his 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 um phone was real staticky. The reason why Minister Howe said that was because whatever Minister Howe said, his response, his voice got real high. Like ah, it came out like that. And I and I thought in my head too, like, what the fuck did I just that hear? Spirit came out. Yeah, like, you know, he was just like, and then, you know how somebody's voice gets high, but it got feminine high, you know? It got feminine high. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, this is not, this is no, you know, it's slight on the brother, but high. it did get feminine high, you know? What the hell? You know, you know how y'all girls get when y'all, you know, it got like that. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, Chris Harris. What the I just hear? What the hell? What? You know, when that when that comes from a guy, you kind of go, what the fuck did I just hear? <laughs> and then uh, Minister Howe just called it out, like, oh, you are in one of those churches because <laughs> you have a feminine spirit on you. I said, oh shit, it's about to go down, Prophet Donnell. Solar slide. Solar slide. Solar slide. Shout out to George Macon. Oh, I see you with George Macon in the building. George Macon. Yeah, he, he you know. <laughs> His voice got feminine high. I know what I'm talking about. Well, he sounded like one of the pointer sisters. <laughs> what what, what they saying? The the best of my love. That's the pointer sisters, right? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking that, about. He got that high. Yeah, yeah, he was like that. He was like that with it. Mariah, Mar Mariah Carey high. Mariah Carey high. There you go. <laughs> Oh, man. I call her that nigga Sister Sledge. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's supposed to be because he don't want to be in the league no more. I, and I after the conversation, I was like, you know what? I called you to see what was up with you. But I don't think that this league is for you, brother. But he was so adamant on challenging um, Minister Howe because he says to Minister Howe that, well, you're a minister, but I'm a prophet, so I'm over you. That's what he said to Minister Al. That's when it kind of got turned up. He's an idiot. You know? More times. So, you know, um, it's supposed to be an off-the-record debate going on between Minister Howe and Prophet Donnell because that Christian beef is real. I, it was out of my league, you know, my the Christianity. I had to take a step back and just listen because they throwing all our biblical, you know, you know, jargon. And then, you know, I just had to fall back and listen. So y'all may be able to witness that. We'll see. We'll see. You know, I'll let you guys know. Maybe, you know, I'll just pop up out of nowhere. You'll see it on the stream. I'll pop up in the, okay, Rabbi Lewis versus Prophet Donnell. Y'all already know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I will say, man, you know, the rabbi, I mean, uh, um, Mr. Howell, man, he, um, he, he had, because it got to the point where they was going back and forth, like, show your evidence that you prophesied, show that you're a prophet, show that you prophesied, show you a true minister, show your examples. Okay, we're going to have a debate where we're going to show all the people that we saved and we uplift. That's what they are, that's how they was talking. It got personal. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, 
I don't know how this is going to go down, but you know. Yeah. But anyway, I'm like, yo. However it's going to go down, it's going to go down, you know. <laughs> and it'll be right here on Soul Our Vision Debate League, of course. <laughs> so with that being said, we could go ahead and end this thing out. Yahara, um, I believe he had the more solid argument for tonight's debate. Um, I think Rabbi Lewis, I think he made an attempt this time. He was trying to think of more stuff to say. <laughs> but, but he just said, you know, I can't, so I'll just see my round. But the short rounds, it hurts you, Rabbi Lewis. The short rounds hurt you. Because when you do a short round, what it does, it limits the um it limits the information and in one that is good for the person that you're debating because there's less argument, you know? Because you want to present a body of evidence to prove your argument. So when you shorten up your rounds, brother, that gives one solar mind that's to work with on the shuckle buck. And two, it's not really showing that you have a command over the information that you're debating. So, um, I think that, uh, you know, despite of the fact that the rounds were shortened, I think that uh, Yahurai Ben Nazareth had the better argument. You know, he, you couldn't show me that he was a Shiite Muslim. When I asked you, you didn't really provide no evidence that he was a Shiite Muslim. Um... So, I give my votes <laughs> to Yahra bin Nazareth. And the Shuckle Buck round also goes to Yah Yahra bin uh, Nazareth uh, for the same reasons. Um, I think that uh, Rabbi Lewis cannot really provide sufficient information that can prove that um, when Jesus returned, he will be a Shiite Muslim. He gave me a lot of things that I was really new. Maybe that's from his own research. It was nothing that he was showing me that was based off of um, anything that was kind of um, surrounding the actual face of the Shiite Muslims. Um, I think that he got kind of caught up on, you know, Prophet Muhammad coming back. I was a little confused whether the last prophet thing, Jesus is coming back, but he's not a prophet. Um, for some of the answers he gave me, it was like the first time I ever heard of those answers. He did not provide a source for any of those things. You know, like when, okay, when Jesus come back, is he going to be a prophet? No. Was Jesus a prophet before? Yeah. When did he stop being a prophet? Uh, he stopped being a prophet in the book of Barnabas. So, um, this is the first time me hearing this. So, I don't know, you know, how that, you know, it didn't really, you know, his argument didn't connect. So, I vote for Yon Rabbi Nazareth. Uh, shout out to the family. Uh, shout out to both debaters. It's been a very interesting debate to say the least, family. And um, this is just how it goes on the Solo Vision Debate League. We'll, got, we'll see you guys not tomorrow, but the day after. With a very powerful debate, family. It will be going down. I think this will be the 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time debate. Um, and that will be between Yahara, I mean Yashar, and Brandon Bay. Aboriginals, and I've made this topic up myself because they couldn't come up with a topic. Aboriginals or Israelites, which would be better politically for black people? Come in noontime. That'll be Saturday, the 26th. It will be going down here on Solar Vision Debate League. So, with that being said, hmm. after the show, it's the after party. We'll see you on God. Shout out to you, so peace. Shout out to you, Lord.
welcome to us.